Hi, welcome to Just Jesus Foundations. And today we're going to look at this great subject. It's lesson 14, which is founded in Christ Jesus. Founded in Christ Jesus. You know, Jesus is known as our foundation and our rock. So today we're going to look at how we are founded and how we are built in the rock, Jesus Christ. So if you have your notes, let's go to our notes and look at the introduction together. And let's read together. It says this, when you became a Christian, a whole new life started. You were founded on a solid foundation, which is Christ. Hallelujah. And Christ, folks, is the foundation. It's not that we're learning the word of God and we're reading the scriptures and we're praying every day as though that's our foundation. Those are things we do. But the reality is that Christ himself, as a person, as a person who died and rose again, is the very foundation of your life and my life, the very foundation of the church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's just turn to the scripture section and let's begin to track through these scriptures and let's read them together and let's understand them together. The first scripture says in Ephesians 2 verse 20 to 21. Ephesians 2 verses 20 to 21. I'm reading from the King James Version and it says this, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building, fitly framed together, grows unto a holy temple in the Lord. Hallelujah. And so this is a scripture that talks about the foundations, folks and about who the foundation is. It's not what the foundation is, it's who the foundation is. And the foundation for your Christian life, the foundation of the church, the foundation of Christianity is Jesus Christ himself. It is not what is the foundation, it's a person. Jesus himself, his presence, his act on the cross, his act in his resurrection, what he has done for you. We know it as the finished work of Christ. It is the foundation of our lives. And we get into trouble when we don't build off that foundation. We get into trouble in our Christian life sometimes when we forget the foundation, which is Christ, and build our own thing by our own understanding, our own mindsets, our own doctrines, and we drift away from the foundational teaching of Jesus' death and resurrection, the foundational teaching of his finished work. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you notice again, it says, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. And this is the case, folks, we are built in Jesus Christ. He is our firm foundation, like the song says, of course, hallelujah. So as we begin to track through this first verse together, let's understand that without a foundation, the building crumbles. You know, even new builds today, if the foundation isn't good, if you can have great materials, you could have great wood, you could have great uh, bricks and mortar you can have the highest quality workmanship you can have the best carpenters electricians etc but no matter how a building looks on the outside without the right foundation in place we can find that over time the building begins to crack begins to sink begins to subside especially in poor weather conditions so it's the same Hallelujah. With our Christian walk, folks, we've got to get the foundation right. The fact is, Christ is the foundation of your life. But sometimes if we don't understand 
that the foundation is a finished work. It's Christ himself we build wrongly in our lives. And the cracks begin to show. The storm comes and we begin to break apart. And so we've got to understand what our salvation, who our salvation, what it's achieved in Christ Jesus, our identity in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so we see that it says that the foundations of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. And so what you had here, folks, is simple. You have Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. What is a, a cornerstone? Well, in the building of a, uh, the foundation, there would be a foundation stone known as the cornerstone. And so what that did would mean that it would be a foundational stone in which two walls, the two main walls of the building, could be built off. And that's so important, folks, because this represents Jews and Gentiles, that in Christ being the cornerstone, Jews and Gentiles are brought together to be one body, to be one church as, as they believe. And so Christ has done that as the foundation stone. Jewish believers, Gentile believers brought together in one in Christ Jesus our foundation and so there's unity in that folks there's blessing in that folks because of Jesus Christ but he also talks about the foundations of the apostles and the prophets and so when Jesus rose again from the dead he taught them concerning his finished work why he had to die why he had to rise again he taught the apostles after the resurrection through the scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures, all the scriptures concerning himself, what he'd done and why he had to do it. And so this became the foundational teaching called the Apostles Doctrine that we see in Acts 2.42, that the church began to be built and to grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ as the apostles taught these foundational truths. They taught Jesus Christ himself. They taught from the Old Testament scriptures why Jesus died, why he rose from the get dead. They taught our identity in Christ. In fact, the apostle Paul talked about, as I've said before, in Christ, in whom, it's in him, it's by him, it's with him. And he taught these truths of identity in the finished work of Christ. This is known as the Apostles' Doctrine. And the church is built not just on the, the doctrine of these things, it's built in the reality of what they taught, the reality of Jesus Christ himself hallelujah and so that's why the finished work of christ is so important to understand not just in raising your hand at salvation or saying a prayer of salvation and being born again obviously that journey begins at being born again but we must grow in the knowledge of Christ. We must acknowledge, as Philemon says, we must acknowledge every good thing that is in Christ Jesus, his finished work. And as we acknowledge that, we begin to grow in that, we begin to live that, we begin to exhibit Jesus Christ in and through our lives. Hallelujah. Let's look at the next scripture together. Matthew 7 verses 25 it says this a very famous portion of the word of God and it declares again that Christ is our foundation he is our rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded notice founded upon that rock hallelujah and of course this is the parable of the wise and foolish builders and here jesus christ is prophetically beginning to speak in his teaching concerning himself and those who believe upon him those who are founded upon him they are like wise builders they hear the words of jesus and as jesus went through the gospels 
He began to teach them concerning he was going to die. He was going to be raised from the dead. He talks about, in, uh, through the Gospels, he talks about, believe on the Son of Man, believe on me. And so the wise builders are those who hear that, understand that, perceive that. And when he died and rose again, they believed on him as the Messiah. They believed on his death and they believed on his resurrection and they saw it as a finished work. Hallelujah. And those are the wise builders who built their salvation upon Jesus Christ by believing on him and his finished work. And so when the storms come, they stand strong. When the storms beat upon that house, that life, they stand strong. Hallelujah. It is the same with the foolish builders. The foolish builders in this story are, is related to the Pharisees. The Pharisees teaching of their version of the law, their added rules and regulations. And Jesus is clearly saying, if you're going to believe on the Pharisees' words, you're like a foolish builder. And when the storms come, you will come falling and crashing to the ground. And so here we see that a foundation is key to your life. The right foundation must be Jesus. You must build off that foundation in your life. Build off the gospel. Walk according to the gospel. Build your life in the gospel and the finished work of Jesus Christ. You as a Christian have a strong foundation and you must build off that foundation. It's Jesus Christ. And so it's like the Galatian church. And Paul said, didn't he, after preaching the gospel to them, after they had received Christ, after he taught them, they didn't have to obey the law anymore. They must obey Jesus Christ. They must understand his grace in their life. Hallelujah. And when false teachers came in and said something different, Paul said, who has bewitched you? And so we must understand that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the truth of his death and resurrection is key to not only getting saved, but also continuing our walk in his grace, being built on him, Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so we see that clearly. Let's turn to the next scripture. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Here Paul the Apostle is talking to the Corinthian church who was in an utter mess. They were sinning like mad. They were behaving like the world. And he illustrates to them the wilderness experience of the Israel people. And as they was in the Israel, as the Israelites and as the, the Jewish people was wandering in the wilderness, they got fed and also they got watered. And where did they get the water from? From a rock. And Moses was commanded to strike the rock the first time, wasn't he? And as he struck the rock, water poured out and they all began to drink and the cattle began to drink in the desert. And so this was an illustration of Jesus Christ. And it's, Paul clearly says, look, that rock was Christ. That rock in the wilderness represents Christ. And they all drank, hallelujah. And see, we've got to understand again the apostles' doctrine. As they began to look into the Old Testament scriptures, they was taught by Jesus himself after his resurrection. All these illustrations they understood the wilderness experience. They understood who the rock was. They understood who the pillar of cloud was. They understood who, what the pillar of fire was. They understood it was Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we see here a rock in the wilderness that gave them to drink. It's Jesus Christ. And when Moses struck that rock, 
It represented Jesus on the cross being pierced through and struck by his enemies. And it says that when Jesus Christ was on the cross, blood and water flowed. Just like this experience in the wilderness. Water flowed. It was a type of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we've all drunk. When we was born again, we received his spirit, folks. The rock gave forth water in the wilderness. But Jesus Christ has baptized us by his and with his spirit. His life now dwells in you and in me. And that's a foundation, folks. It's Christ's life. Water is life. It is spirit. It's Christ's spirit. It's Christ's life. Now, that is a foundation. The resurrection of Jesus Christ has guaranteed us when we're born again, life within. His life is our foundation on which we stand. And it says we've all drunk that spiritual drink. There's not one born again person who has believed on the death and resurrection of Jesus, that has not drunk of that spiritual drink. Every single one who's born again has drunk of the Spirit. Every single one has the life of Christ's Spirit within them. Does it run dry? No. I always get confused when Christians say, oh yes, I believed upon the Lord, but I'm dry in my Christian life. Look, folks, those are feelings. Those are emotions only, folks. We can feel like we're dry. We can feel like we're down. We can have feelings and emotions from the moment we wake up on the wrong side of the bed in the morning. But the reality is our foundation is Jesus. His life is in us. And it never runs dry. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are a pe people who have drunk of Jesus Christ and his life never runs dry. Jesus himself says that it's like a spring of living water within us. It keeps on springing up every day, no matter how you feel. And that's the point, folks. Being founded in Jesus, being founded in his finished work through the cross and resurrection means that we are supplied with the life of Jesus Christ that never runs dry. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm getting excited now. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And so all Christians have the Spirit of God within them that sustains them. Praise the Lord. And so when we look at the foundation that we as Christians are built upon, upon Christ himself and upon the understanding of his finished work, when we begin to un acknowledge these things, oh, praise the Lord, our Christian life is stable, it's sustained and it's secure. Stable, sustained and secure. So if you feel wobbly at times in your Christian life, all you need to do is begin to look over these truths again of what Christ has done, your identity in Jesus Christ and what is accomplished through the gospel for you. Hallelujah. So let's just look now at the word study section of your notes. Hallelujah. So let's have a little bit more deeper look into the word of the rock. Hallelujah and cornerstone. So in your word study section, you see the word rock. And Jesus said, of course, that we are built upon the rock. The rock being a cliff or a ledge, a projecting rock, a large stone. It's like a, a, it's a it says it, 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 it's a picture of a man like a rock by reason of its firmness and strength of soul. And I just want to say to you, you as a Christian are built on Jesus Christ. So therefore, you are strong in him. Even though your mind might be wobbly, even though your emotions might be wobbly at times. And we can improve on that as we begin to acknowledge what Christ has done. 
and we can begin to get a stability and a firmness to our life. But when we don't always feel like that, Christ is strong in us. Hallelujah. So when we're weak, he is strong because he's always strong. He's a rock. He's firm. He's unmovable. So your Christianity, folks, is not movable. Your salvation is not movable because it's built in Jesus Christ. Those in fear, like their salvation is being moved by the enemy or moved by doubt or moved by fear. That's not true. That's a deception of the enemy. That's the accuser of the enemy. Because your faith is rooted in Christ, the rock, and the cornerstone, which is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And what did Jesus say? When you're built on a rock, the storms come and it won't fall. In the same way, our salvation, we emotionally might be all over the place, but our salvation is secure because it's built in Jesus Christ. It's on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so he's a strength to our soul. He is the cornerstone, isn't he? As we've already said from the scriptures. And it says that it was placed in the extreme corner, the corner foundation stone. For as the cornerstone holds together two walls, so Christ joins together as Christians into one body dedicated to God, those who were Jews and Gentile believers. And that's what, you know... We, when it comes to cornerstones, he also is a, as it says here, and you know, we're built off that cornerstone, but it's also a word of dedication. The, the foundation stones, even today, the uh, big buildings, the foundation stone, that cornerstone is dedicated. Some even have the names of the people it was dedicated to. Oh, folks. <laughs> Understand this, you are built on Christ's dedication. I'll say that again, you are built on Christ's dedication. A lot of the times we try and strive to be dedicated to God the Father. We are striving to be as dedicated as we can be. But I want to say it's not your dedication that counts. It's Christ's dedication that counts. He is the cornerstone. And both Jews and Gentile believers. He has brought us together in one and he is dedicated. He's the dedicated stone. Who was he dedicated by? Who is this cornerstone dedicated by? If you see that Jesus is the cornerstone on which your Christianity is built. Who is the dedicator? You? No. The dedicator of the cornerstone is God the Father. Hallelujah. And revealed by the Holy Spirit. The Father has dedicated his own son. Just like as fathers would dedicate their children in the temple. So God the Father has dedicated his son. Hallelujah. Unto himself. So what application does that have for your Christianity? Your Christian walk, your salvation in fact, is being dedicated because it's built on dedication. It's built on the dedicated Christ himself. Not yours, his. He was so dedicated even to the death on the cross. Hallelujah. And so you have been dedicated unto God the Father because Christ is dedicated and you are built in Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. Hallelujah. One body together. Hallelujah. So this whole body, because it's built in Jesus and on Jesus, is dedicated to God the Father. Isn't that good news? You can stop your striving. I can hear people out there saying, Rich, shouldn't we be dedicated to God? You are dedicated to God. This is the thing. When we understand our identity, when we understand that Christ as our cornerstone, as our rock, as our foundation, all these words that are used for foundation, when we understand he's the cornerstone that is dedicated, we can begin to walk as 
Christ's dedication through us. Rather than achieving dedication, we can let his dedication live through our lives. Praise the Lord. It will be natural to show Christ's dedication. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so it says we should be founded, shouldn't we? The ones that are founded upon the rock, are founded upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, the Christ being the chief corner. The word foundations means beginnings. It means faith in him, which is like a foundation laid in the soul on which is built up the knowledge of saving truth. It always comes back to salvation, folks. And that knowledge of saving faith, when we believed on Jesus, we were founded. When we believed in Jesus, we was placed upon the rock Christ. When we believed in Jesus, we drank from the foundation Christ. When we believed in Jesus, we was founded in the cornerstone Christ dedicated to the Father. So we are dedicated to the Father. Oh, isn't that wonderful? How Christ is the very rock and foundation of our salvation, folks. Even when we are weak, even when we wobble, even when we sin, because we do, don't we, folks? Let's be honest. He is our foundation. Hallelujah. So let's now just turn to the explanation part of the notes and let's read it together praise the lord life can be difficult at times it can throw situations up to us spiritually socially environmentally economically etc can't it life can do that it can do that for you it can do that for me no matter what we are facing, we must understand we are in Christ and founded in Christ. Jesus said storms would come, but those founded on the rock would stand. The rock is Christ. The sand was the teaching of the Pharisees, but our faith in Christ means he is, is, is our rock and foundation this is not us trying to achieve it this is a fact hallelujah he is the foundation cornerstone that holds us up together as the church the apostles and prophets preached jesus's death and they preached jesus's resurrection and they taught what they had done for the believer once they believed hallelujah they taught his finished work our foundation is sure in him even when we are not hallelujah so let's now turn to the other scriptures section and there's quite a lot of scriptures in this section so let's begin together to track through these scriptures that emphasize christ as the rock as the foundation and as the cornerstone to our Christian walk and our Christian life. Hallelujah. So let's now turn to Matthew 16, verse 18. Matthew 16, 18. And we see this clearly. And he's, Jesus said unto Peter, he says, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And this is a clear indication of what the church is actually built on. Now, when we say the church, we're not talking about buildings and spiker roofs. We're not talking about religious people. When we talk about the church, we're talking about the born again believer who is believed by faith in Christ's death and resurrection as a substitution and have believed upon him for salvation, folks. And so we must understand, as a born-again believer, Jesus is introducing the concept here of the church, the ecclesia, the called-out ones. And you are the church. It's not buildings. It's not spiky roofs. It's not bells. The church is a people. 
and as we are born again people and as you have got saved you must understand you are part of the church you are the church as a people together living people hallelujah with the life of christ in them and jesus clearly said thou art peter upon this rock i will build my church now he's not saying here that he's building the church on peter no no if we read before this peter had a revelation that jesus christ was the son of god the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. This was a revealed revelation to Peter at this time. And Jesus is playing on words because it's two Greek words here. Peter being stone and rock being the revelation of Christ. Upon this revelation of myself, upon the, the revelation that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Messiah who died and rose again. Upon that revelation, the church will be founded and the church will be built. And Peter was one of those people that preached this to be true. Even on the day of Pentecost, he stood up and he began to preach Christ as the Son of God. He began to preach Christ as the Messiah. He began to preach what Christ had achieved through his death and resurrection. He began to preach these truths and 3,000 were saved. So it's not that the church is built upon Peter. It's built upon the revelation of Christ that Peter had received at that point. Hallelujah. And it says the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. And folks, the gates into hell was death. The gates into hell was Hades, folks, leaving this body. And even hell could not prevail against Jesus's death because here Jesus is talking prophetically hell could not prevail folks he could not stop the church being built from the death of Jesus Christ death of Jesus Christ could not stop what was about to happen hallelujah and hell couldn't prevail against what Christ was doing in his redemptive work through his death and resurrection Death seems like the end, doesn't it? But ha, oh, it's not the resurrection came, folks. And so death could not provide. The gates of hell could not stop what the death of Christ achieved for you and for me. Hallelujah. And from that, it says that Peter as well was given the keys to the kingdom. As you begin to read it, Peter was given, because of this revelation, keys to the kingdom. What does that mean, Rich? It means simply this, that Peter was the apostle that could open the door of the evangelism of the gospel to the Jews and to the Gentiles. He was the, the apostle that was given that authority to do. He didn't have to keep doing it. All he had to do was do it once for the door to be flung open. And on the day of Pentecost, when he stood up and preached, he opened the door for the gospel, the evangelism to the Jews. And then in Acts 10, in Cornelius' house, when he preached the gospel to the Gentiles, he opened and flung the door wide open for the evangelism of the Gentiles and the gospel message to be preached to them. Remember the cornerstone, Jews and Gentiles in one body in Christ, founded in him. That's what Peter did in Acts 2 and in Acts 10. Hallelujah. What about Colossians 2, 7? It says, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. We as kingdom people we as christians are rooted in christ and it's important to have our roots isn't it again foundation roots you know what we're rooted in what we're built upon is so key folks and i see lots of christians that 
are in Christ, but they don't know it. They don't understand what Christ has done. They don't acknowledge everything that is in Christ. They don't understand what the cornerstone is, what it's achieved for them. And so their lives are up and are down all the time. And you don't want your life to be up and down, worried if God loves you, worried if you're good enough, worried that God's thinking the best of you and always striving in your Christian life. And that's why your roots are so important. And you are rooted in Christ. So acknowledge that. You are built up in Christ. So acknowledge that. You are established in the faith, so acknowledge that. And the truth of Christ does establish you. We don't want merry-go-round Christians always in circles of downness, always in circles of does God love me, doubting their salvation and all these kind of things. Understand that when you understand the finished work of Christ and build your Christian walk on the finished work of Christ, you're established in the faith. The faith. Hallelujah. Well, how does that come about? Yeah, Paul tells us how it comes about in Colossians 2 verse 7. He says, as you have been taught, teaching of who Jesus is, teaching of in Christ, teaching of your identity, teaching of grace, teaching of the cross and the resurrection and what it accomplished for you that kind of teaching that Paul was giving out all the time was rooting them was building them and was establishing them it is the same for you folks hallelujah what about Jude 1 verse 20 let's read that together but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Here we see this word, word building up, buildings, construction on a foundation. It says on your most holy faith. And sometimes we get this wrong because we feel like we've got to build up our faith. I must build my faith, brother. I must believe more. I must confess more. I must uh, build my faith up. No, no, no. This scripture does not say build up your faith. This scripture says build on your most holy faith. You're building on your faith in Christ. It is Christ that's the foundation. Your most holy faith, building on faith, is faith in Christ, folks. And so that's the key here, that we build ourselves up in the Lord. And this word building is a word of construction, that we build up our Christian life. We construct a strong Christian life as we build on our faith in Christ as we understand that Christ as we understand what the finished work of Christ is we are building on Christ and we are constructing a strong walk in him hallelujah what about Acts 20 32 I said there was a lot of scriptures didn't I Hallelujah. And he says, Now, brethren, I command you to God, commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all which are sanctified. Hallelujah. And so here again, we see the word, the word of his grace. This is the gospel again, the gospel of grace. The gospel of Christ, the gospel of God, it's what Christ did in his death and resurrection. And as we teach his grace, not works, as we teach the finished work, as we teach the gospel and what it's done for us by grace, by grace, folks, not our works, then we begin to be built up and constructed in our Christian life. And this is the mistake that a lot of preachers make. They think law builds and constructs Christians. They feel that having a go and rebuking them builds up Christians. They feel like do's and don'ts and traditions builds up Christians. No, it's the word of his grace. That gospel that we don't all just accept and believe, but then walk in 
that builds and constructs our life because the gospel is Jesus and what he had done for us. Hallelujah. And he is grace. Praise the Lord. What about Romans 9, 33? As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offence. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And here we see the two comparisons concerning the stumbling stone, concerning the cornerstone, concerning Jesus himself and his finished work. There are those that stumble. And here is the reference to those who obeyed the law, but obeyed it not in faith. They obeyed it from works perspective. They didn't see Christ in the offerings and the sacrifices. They didn't see it. They didn't perceive it. And then there were those who did see it. They did perceive it. They did do the offerings in faith. And they perceived that he that was coming, the Messiah that was coming, was going to do this sacrifice on their behalf. Hallelujah. And see, so you see those who Christ is a stumbling stone to them. He is an offence to them. Why? Because they're offended that their own righteous acts, their own righteous works are not enough for salvation. They're offended that it's by faith. And Christians can even get offended that it's only by faith and grace in his finished work, folks. They can get really offended. Religious people get offended because they believe if they do right, then God owes them salvation. If they believe right in terms of doing their works and doing righteous acts, then God approves of them. But the approval is Jesus. His work on the cross is what God approves of. So it has to be by faith. And so he's a rock of offence. He's the cornerstone becomes a stumbling stone to those who don't understand it by faith. Hello, don't understand that it's by faith alone. They, their pride gets in the way. I've done this, I've done that. And I want you never to get into a habit as you grow in Christ Jesus and believing that your works is what saves you. It's your works that keeps you. It's your works that God is looking at to whether you stay in Christ or not. No, do Christians live a life of works? We live a life of fruits and we live a life of works from our spirit within, not to earn salvation, but because we have salvation. Not to become like Jesus, but because we are like Jesus in the inside. That's the truth of the different comparison. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10. According to the grace of God which he has given me as a wise master builder, I have laid a foundation and another builds thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds thereon. For, uh, for no other foundation can a man lay that which is laid. What's the foundation, folks? Your prayer life. Your Bible study, your fasting, your giving, your worship. No, the foundation of your salvation, the foundation of your Christian walk is clearly seen here in 1 Corinthians 3.11. The foundation which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ. We pray building on that foundation. We worship building on that foundation we give building on that foundation all our christian walk is about building off and on the foundation which is already laid the finished work of christ you cannot pray correctly without understanding the finished work of christ you cannot pray effectively and worship effectively without understanding the finished work of Christ. Because you'll always go to God in prayer with guilt, for instance, and doubt and unbelief. Do, is he listening to me? If, if you understand the foundation, you will understand he's listening. Hallelujah. And I could go on and on. Building from the foundation is key to every other aspect of your Christian walk and life folks 
Amen. Two more scriptures to go. 2 Timothy 2 verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Remember who the foundation is? Christ. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So the foundation stands sure. It's Christ. And so our Christian salvation stand sure it's it, some people call it eternal security absolutely you're eternally secure because the salvation is based on christ and so he is steadfast and sure and as long as he is steadfast and sure and as a foundation of our salvation then our salvation is steadfast and sure and we all know christ is always going to be steadfast and sure he says we know who is his god knows who is his children hallelujah praise the lord and let everyone that name of the name of christ the foundation depart from iniquity and so how do we get christians to depart from iniquity how do we get christians to live a life of walking in holiness and righteousness how do, how, how do we do that? How do we get Christians to stop a lifestyle of sin? By causing them to understand that built on a foundation. To cause them to understand and explain who that foundation is. It's Jesus. To explain the finished work of Christ. And as they begin to construct their Christian life from that foundational truths, guess what? They will walk in Christ. They will walk in with that righteousness that they have living through them, the holiness that they have in Christ and you have in Christ, you'll begin to live it. You will, because it's Christ's life. Remember, the rock that gave drink, his spirit, his spirit through you, his life through you. Hallelujah. And the last scripture, wherefore also it is contained, I'm reading from 1 Peter 2, 6, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious. He that believeth on him shall not be confounded. A stone of stumbling, in verse 8, and a rock and offence, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereon also they were appointed. So Peter here is saying to the Jewish audience, look, the way... To be built on a cornerstone. The way to do it is to believe on him. That's the key, folks. He's saying Christ is the cornerstone. Christ is the foundation. Christ the Messiah has arrived. He is the foundation of our salvation. So what must we do? He says believe on him. And again, we did he say work for him? Try and be righteous. No, he says, believe on the cornerstone. Believe on the foundation of our salvation. As Jewish people, the Messiah is the foundation. And Jesus is that Messiah. So believe on him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And he, says, he goes on to say that those who stumble at the word. What are they stumbling at? They are stumbling at the word of the gospel that says simply believe on Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's now turn to the, the, the questions section. Sorry, the apply section of your notes. When you feel weak, when you feel that life storms, or even accusation storms are coming against you. Remember what Jesus did, for it makes you firm and secure. Hallelujah. And so the last thing on your notes now is simply the questions. I'll read these to you. You can be, if you're in groups, split into groups and, and kind of, you know, kind of talk about these questions and answer these questions if you're on your own. Then answer these questions. You can, you can just go through these questions together. Hallelujah. The three questions. The three questions are from Romans 9.33. Why is Christ the rock and cornerstone 
a foundation for some and yet an offence to others. Question two, what does it mean to grow unto a holy temple in the Lord from the foundation? And you'll get that from Ephesians 2, 20 and 21. And number three, have, how have we, sorry, how have we drunk or drank from Christ the rock? How have we drank from Christ the rock? And so as we end this session today, this lesson today, understand your Christianity is firm, it's secure and founded in Jesus Christ. That's a fact. But now let us grow from that foundation by understanding the finished work of Jesus Christ. Until next time on Just Jesus Foundations, God bless you.